I'm back. Well, what have we got here? This is a DV Mark Multiamp. I've learned how to read. <laughs> anyway, listen. I think this thing's uh, set to shake up that uh, that market that it that it sits in. You know those emulator simulator type things. I don't mean the Kemper either. The Kemper, I think, is just working in a different a different area. What we've got with this one is this is a fantastic amplifier that's very very easy to use, and that's one of the main advantages of this product. Well. It's nearly one of the main advantages. You've got a few more as well. Some of which are quite uh, quite important and quite amazing. Uh, for the money that you pay for this, this has actually got a stereo amp in that can be mono, it can be sort of bridged together. But when it's in its stereo mode, it's 250 watts a side. It can be mono, like I said, it can be 500 watts all out, or <laughs> you can send it to the front of house uh, as a preamp. Uh, for example, uh, sounds good to me, but it's Italian. Now, hold on. I know a lot of you guys will be saying, oh, it's not USA, it's not this, it's not made in England, it's not... Listen, the Italians, some of the older stuff from Italy, you know, let's face it, wasn't the best in the world, particularly regarding the build. But this thing, honestly, I think is a little bit different. I've already looked inside uh, some of the other products they make, and it, it's quite amazing how good they are. So what we're going to do uh, with the DV Mark multi-amp is what I always do, and that's do uh, an inside and out review. Uh, of course, it's going to be on the website too, www.tennymackenzie.com, but it's going to be on this video as well. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. I've seen various people play through this, and uh, uh, it's awesome, man. It's just rock and roll. So what I'm going to do is whip the lid off and we'll take a quick look at what this thing's made of, see if there's any Italian stallions hidden in there and uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Just one last thing. New hat. This one, it's a Martini Racing Team hat. It's because uh, I can't find the cat hat. The Tony McKenzie hat's in another domain. So I've got this one, rock and roll. Let's go have a look inside now. That was the most important thing. <laughs> well, I've opened the lid, I've got all the screws hiding over there, just off camera, no problem. And uh, I really love this, this lid, it's nice. You know, anodized aluminium, really, uh, really smart stuff. I could expect to find on something really expensive. Well, I suppose it is, but it's half the price of some of the other stuff, anyway. Let's flip the lid open and take a look inside. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Well, here we are inside the multi amp from DV Mark. Well, the first thing you get as an impression is that this thing's been put together really, really well. The quality uh, of the components is, in my opinion, very high. Uh, they spend a long time by the look on it, on the things that really matter. For example, Get your power in coming in here. This whole section here is the power supply, and that's no tuppenny halfpenny power supply. That's a quality power supply. Look at the, uh, you know, even the the heat shield for all these uh, components. It's awesome. Moving across from that, uh, what we've got here uh, is the power amp. So we've got stereo power amp. Look at again. Look at the uh, look at the cooling fence. Really. Uh, Decent stuff, you know. Moving on away from all that, uh, power supply, power amp. What you've got down the back here, in the first section, you've got uh, like an output board. Well, there it goes down there. You have another output board around there. Actually, all that's output to there. You've got MIDI over here, and you've got the whip at the end just so we get it exactly right. Moving further along, obviously you've got the fan and you've got the uh, mains in. Okay, there's another shot from uh, the other angle. Uh, what you've got here is the main board, down in this area. The main board has 
a load of I.O. It's got a display there. It's got a lot of control buttons here, on off down this end of course. And the other controls across on a couple of uh, PCBs, which is really nice to see because uh, the more things are on little PCBs, the, the more chance you've got of repairing them rather than pulling out this big fat motherboard. That big fat motherboard does look pretty cool. Uh, just looking at it, honestly, the build quality is as good as you can get. Yeah, I think the, uh, the whole unit is actually uh, exceedingly well built. I mean, you've only got to take a quick look and you can see all the usual things. It's almost like Mesa Boogie. Look, you can see all these things that have been glued in, uh, or should I say, uh, have something stuck on them that stops the, uh, the connectors coming off. You know, you can throw this around on the road, I guess. I looked at one product uh, that was comparable in some ways to this, not in price, it was twice the price and it had no power amp. And the thing was with that, when you actually had a look in there, you could actually see welding down the corners that was just like, uh, well, the nicest way to describe it was uh, like pigeon excrement. Yeah, that was what the welding was like, which is not really too cool. This one, on the other hand, has got none of that rubbish. This thing's, as I said, it's built awesome. Even down to these components made in Italy. It's really nice, as I said, you know, historically, uh, it's some Italian products have not had the highest of quality, but this thing, honestly, it's just awesome. Uh, you don't need to worry about what's going on inside this product, uh, neither in component quality, build quality. Uh, the, the overall thing is just uh, perfect. And you, they've even gone to the length of putting, you know, nice, soft, felt type, or fire, yeah, sort of felt rubbery type of material down these sides stop things like the lid from rattling and things like that. It's really awesome. Anyway, that's a quick look inside. Uh, we'll take a look around the back and the front now. Okay, well I'm about to put the lid back on it. Uh, I just wanted to show you one thing just before I put the lid back on this and it shows you the care uh, that uh, DV Mark have actually, the, you know, the lengths they've gone to, to uh, or it does to me at least, show you that they have a pride in their product. When I lifted this lid, uh, you'll find on most you know, products that you buy, the inside isn't really too cool on when you get on a lid or something like that. But just take a look at that. Because when you look at the inside of this lid, it's absolutely pristine. It isn't good, it's pristine. And I think that runs right the way through uh, the quality on this amplifier, and the way that it's been assembled by what are really uh, professionals artisans if you will uh, it's a great product I don't just say that you know I'm just like you this product is different you know they've even got it's stove enamel on the front or something very like it I mean how's that engineered man that's uh, that's awesome one of the things you get with this thing as well by the way are the the dog ears <laughs> I love doing that don't you <laughs> oh, cats and dogs I don't know Anyway, they just uh, clip on the side, all nice, on each side, you know how that goes. And you can put them in a rack, which is quite cool. They even give you the nuts. Or should I say screws? Yeah, they're not nuts at all, I was lying. <laughs> the fact is, you get everything you need to plug it in a rack. That's cool. And these are not your cheap, nasty things. These the build of these is fantastic. I don't know if you can see that. What do you think? What do you think, guys? Is that rock and roll or what? I've got to think I'm back. Well, actually, I never went anywhere. I was just uh, looking this thing in. I just want to talk about this before we go back to the DV Mark multi amp. This is a 1x12 uh, speaker and uh, it's really heavy. In fact, it's so heavy, uh, I can pick it up <laughs> really easy. It's so light, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's got that magnet in the back, you know, that neodymium stuff. That means them little tiny magnets are not as powerful as one this big. And, and what that does, that allows you to have a really light speaker cap. And uh, this is 8 ohms, 150 watts. And if you set the multi-amp up into uh, stereo into 8 ohms, guess what you get? You get 150 watts, so more than enough for what I need. I've got... Uh, Two of these, and I'll be whacking them on the DV Mark multi-amp, 
and blowing the missus away. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. It's one of those uh, open back thingies and uh, that'll have an effect on your tone of course. Uh, probably a positive one so who cares. Here it is, eight tones, made in Italy. I'm beginning to like this made in Italy stuff. <laughs> Let's call it that. It looks awesome. Leather handles on the top, nice little red leather corners. Oh. I got the cream one because I like cream. I, I'm going to put the strawberries in there later. <laughs> oh man, what an awesome uh, piece of kit. Everything about it's great. You know, my bass guy, he was chirping on about Mark Bass or Mark Bass, call it what you will, uh, for years on end. Uh, and I was just reading in the manual, they said, oh, it took 10 years for Mark Bass to, or Bass, to control the, uh, really, the, the bass market. <laughs> and now they're going to do the same to the guitar market, they say. And uh, you know what? I think they could. I don't know whether they will. The kit's good enough. It's all down to people trying the kit. Once you try it, I have a sneaky feeling that you're going to like what you try. Uh, anyway, apart from this cab, uh, which is a C112 small in uh, cream. They have a 4B12, which is actually lighter than four of these. <laughs> obvious. But it, actually, as far as uh, 4B12s go, it's very light. In fact, they almost shipped me the wrong one. Not DV Mark, but where I bought it from. And uh, I changed my mind on the 4B12 because I haven't got the... Uh, you know, the space in the studio. So I opted for two of these. I think it's a real cool thing. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, they're not that expensive either. Actually, it's light as a feather. <laughs> as is, funny enough, this, this thing's very light too. Bear in mind, it's got uh, a dual uh, 250 watt uh, amp in there, as well as all the gizmos and all the, all the other stuff. Uh, it's extremely light. You could almost pick it. Well, I saw one guy pick it up with one hand. He did a demo. Uh, so let's have a quick run through uh, some of the features and benefits of the product. And uh, then we'll run through all these knobs and the rest of it and uh, see where we go from there. It's all going to be interesting. Of course, at the end, uh, there's quite some nice demos. I'm also going to be uh, uploading some stuff onto this that uh, some of these uh, fantastic musicians that use it have uh, actually made, which is quite nice really, because they're free. You want to go buy this? Yeah? You want to rock music? Go and buy it. I've never met the guy. Well, actually, he was a fleeting glimpse when I was on the DV Mark stand at the Mesa. Uh, music Mesa, or Mesa. I don't know which one they call it, but I'm English. <laughs> anyway, this guy, you go and find his video. He's on YouTube somewhere. I wouldn't say he's good. That's the wrong word. If you'd actually take off, this is only me, track one, two and three, all the rest of it's awesome stuff. One, two and three are sort of jazz, sort of rock, some, I don't know what it is, but anyway, there he is. He's just one of the many artists that are on uh, using this kit. And uh, the other guy I like, of course, is uh, Andy James. Now, if you've never heard of Andy James, you don't know what you're missing, honestly. Andy James is actually at the end of this video and uh, I had the pleasure of chatting with Andy a little bit and then uh, watching some of the things he did. Actually I watched him while he was tweaking this unit and uh, apparently he likes this unit because it's really so simple to use which unlike some of the other ones at about twice the price of this one without the amp. Uh, then things are, well let's go spend a day and make a tone. <laughs> hopeless. Uh, manuals are this thick. You get the manual on this thing, by the way. Look how thin it is. Look at this. There's absolutely nothing in it, which that tells me straight off this is a good product. <laughs> if anybody can use it, that's good. And of course, it's still got all the benefits of all the other things, like these sounds that you can load up and all sorts of stuff. So let's go and have a look a bit closer, and I'll talk generally as we go. Sounds a good idea, or a good plan, as they say in the States. Okay, let's take a look at the front of the uh, multi-amp across to here. You start off with the obvious things, input, and you've got a pad on there, which is quite nice. Now that can 
flick around a few times and it can go to minus 6, 0 dB, or plus 6 dB, or plus 12 dB, uh, which compensates really for the higher output pickups. So you can sort of just flip around that. And I guess you can store it. Uh, I haven't checked that yet, but we'll find out later when I get the camera on the uh, when it's being used. Very nice. We've got channel one, channel two, and channel three. So in in this respect, straight off, it's it's a little bit like a regular amp, which is quite nice. I like that sort of thing. Nice and simple. Channel one, channel two, channel three. I mean, when did you last see an amp that you're going to use two channels at once on? <laughs> you didn't. So DV Mark, it seems. I've had a bit of a brainwave there and done what everybody else does with a two or a tube amp or a tube amp or a valve amp and they've just said channel one channel two channel three it sounds awesome uh, I'll come back to these later these channels next thing in line we got uh, speaker what we can do with that this allows you to have quick access to the simulators the cabs so we can just whiz through and choose them we'll come back to that again it's all very nice moving along to the amp I like this this is a bit like uh, Actually, that's a bit like Kemper, and uh, they light up, I think. Nice, very nice. Very much like the Kemper, but not so much like the Kemper rack, because uh, on the Kemper rack, they were over here somewhere, they did away with the lights because there wasn't enough room. Well, fair enough, uh, but great design. That is, I really like that. So you've got the gain, that's the input gain. Uh, bass, mid, high, or treble, the presence, and then the level. And by the way, these things just go round and round and round. They're one of those type of things. A bit like on the uh, Hughes and Kettner core blade, indeed. Which I saw at the show as well. So that's quite nice. Uh, they're all exactly the same, uh, really, as what you'd find uh, on the control parts of the amp that you choose. So if you get me, if you choose a particular amp, these are exactly the same as what you'd have on that particular amp. Okay, now taking a quick look at the uh, the display, what we've got here, uh, so what you've got is mono, DV clean, preset. Next thing we have is these things here, if you can see them. They're what uh, DV Mark call slots. Now the thing is about a slot, uh, it's got seven slots where you can put the amp models and the effects and one slot for the cab model so seven combinations plus one for the cab well there's a cab you can see it from here that's a typical setup when you first turn the unit on it's all very nice uh, next thing we've got is this little thing down the bottom here you can see it says system well what's all that about that looks uh, a bit complex well it isn't really it's just for setting stereo and men uh, stereo or mono uh, or recall the memory bank from an SD card, for example, transfer the memory bank onto an SD card. So you can get it off the SD card over there, and you can put it onto the SD card from in there, and it's all done under the system. All very nice. Next thing we got here is it says stereo. Well, that's simply that's showing the output mode. We've got stereo 250 plus 250 at 4 ohms, 150, 150 at 8 ohms. And 85 and 85 at 16 ohms, which is more than enough even. <laughs> Trust me on this. Uh, and then you've got mono. Uh, you've got a mono bridge, which will take both outputs and take it up to uh, 500 watts, believe it or not, which is nice, uh, at 8 ohms, or 300 watts at 16 ohms. All very nice. Next thing we've got is the pad, which you can see just there. And uh, that just shows the selected input pad from minus 6, 0, plus 6, or plus 12. Uh, which we saw earlier on on the input side. If I was to press the pad button on the left hand side above the input, what you get is this ability to change them all around, all nice and simple. And you exit back out. You just hit it once to go in and you hit it once again to go back out. All very nice and very simple indeed. Okay, the next thing in line is this one up here, right there. Slot select. That, uh, if you can see the screen, chooses which slot you want to actually change or modify or once again very simple and that's one of the most important things about it very simple number 15 is an exit button so no matter where you are if you just keep pressing that you'll get out which is quite nice okay next in line is the up button you can see it there and there's a down button 
down there. <laughs> left scroll button and right scroll button. Now the thing about the left and right scroll button, when the bank function is selected, this, bu this button basically allows you to scroll up eight presets or down eight presets, depending whether you're choosing left or right, if you get me. Uh, we got uh, another item down here, which is a store button right there. You can see that. And 21 is a recall button, so we can store it and get it back with those two buttons. Last thing in this view is the uh, the on and off. Everybody knows what that is. You just flip it and it works. <laughs> At least it does for sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't, but this one seems to be working. Uh, I think you've got to be careful with multi-amps. Uh, in fact, almost anything that DV Mark make is you really want to buy the right product for your country because the specify the uh, you know the input voltage for your country and even if I was in the UK and I had a say a 230 volt one that could be a bit of a problem because often the voltage in the UK is 240 in the case of this one which is 240, uh, a 240 volt UK actually the unit's 250 volts so you've always got that percentage of uh, safety uh, where input voltage is concerned so don't go and buy a 110 volt one or a 100 volt one or whatever it is and try and think you're going to convert it because <laughs> you're not okay next in line is the SD card and uh, that formats to what they call FAT32 reminds me of the missus a bit but she's not 32 anymore she's nearer 64 I think <laughs> but anyway there it is you put it in there it, they don't actually uh, well, I can't see at the moment anywhere where they tell you what the maximum size of that is. Uh, and lastly, we've got the good old phone socket right there. See? Quite nice. Uh, only thing I don't like about that is it's one of the tiny ones. If it had been the regular size, you know, commercial phones as opposed to, uh, I don't know, the little tiny 3.5 jacks are not, not so good to me. Uh, they tend to break off and things like that. But there you go, that's what's on it. Last thing we got, which I didn't cover, sorry, is the enter button. So no matter what you've done, that says yes, and this one here says no. <laughs> okay, here we are around the back. It's all nice and simple here too. Got the mains in, and you'll notice underneath there, uh, it's one of those mains in with a, a, a main fuse, uh, which is always important. Always uh, carry a spare mains fuse, you never know. Next thing in line, we have... 27 and 28 in the manual it says <laughs> uh, which are your left and right main outputs really and there's a little indicator up there to show you how the wiring goes and all that sort of stuff this one here is for bridging the amplifier so that you, in effect you're taking these two and pushing them out in one obviously that's mono that's the way life is next thing you got in line is this uh, thing here you can see it. Uh, that's a ground lift, and that can help you with, uh, you know, spurious noise if you get on the same ground, you get all that hum and things. Uh, just flip that over and uh, it'll probably eliminate or reduce the hum. Anyway, dead easy. Even I can do it. Next thing we've got for the studio, which is all cool, we've got uh, balanced out left and right. And uh, we've got a sort of little pad there between minus 10 and plus 4, which is always very nice. There we go. You can see them. I'm looking forward to plugging them in. Whoa. As well as having those two balanced outs, you've also got an unbalanced line out, just in case you don't have any anything else to work with. And uh, I suspect that it's going to work on these two as it does with these two. Well, I'm pretty sure it will. Next thing you got is this USB port, and uh, they say in the manual that's for service and maintenance, but uh, it's like everything else. Well, what service and maintenance mean? Well, I guess you could plug it in your computer and upload data and things like that, and uh, we shall see how that goes a little later on. As well as that, you've got also uh, you've got a MIDI port here uh, with an in and a through. Uh, you're familiar with MIDI anyway, and uh, we've got the whip as well with the send and return. Coming back to this USB, one of the things it definitely doesn't do, uh, somebody pointed out uh, at one stage, is that uh, you're not going to be streaming audio out of that, at least not at the moment you're not, because uh, it can't. Now that might change with upgrades and things like that, uh, you know, with firmware, but right now that isn't the way it works. 
Uh, and another thing, there is no uh, sort of librarian available quite yet. And I, I know when I spoke to one of the guys on the stand at uh, the Music Mesa, uh, 2013, he said, oh, in the next release, you know, there's probably going to be one of them. Uh, so we'll wait and see. You know, you've got to remember this product right here is a, a, a relatively new product. And uh, like most of these, they all start out, you know, pretty average and then they improve as they go on. And I'm not suggesting this one's average. What I'm suggesting is that the USB port doesn't do all the things that you might think it does. So just bear that in mind. I'm back. <laughs> Well, just looking at the front of the thing and uh, the back of the thing takes, uh, takes time. And uh, I never said that this review was going to be a little short thing. Listen, all the inside and outside reviews take a long time. Uh, one of the things about it is you want to really get to have a quick look at, uh, well, a slow look actually, at what goes on in there. And most reviews are five minute reviews. What? I'm not in the re business of doing five minute reviews when I do an inside and out review because you want to see inside and out. <laughs> and hopefully you'll learn something about the product that you didn't know before. Well, you've already learned lots about the product that you didn't know before. Of that, there'll be no doubt, even if it was just inside, or the build quality, or uh, you know, some things about DV Mark themselves, you know, the fact they come from base or whatever. But uh, I'm gonna talk generally about it now, and uh, you know, think about the things I'm talking about, and. Uh, you know, the features and things like that, uh, because that's one of the reasons why you're buying this thing. It's a really, uh, it's really awesome front, by the way. I just keep saying that. But it's finished in a fantastic way. The only thing I don't like is the, uh, I don't like the font there. I think that's a little bit, uh, it's a bit old fashioned. And having an old fashioned font on a 21st century product. All the rest are good, DV Mark's good, all this text good, but that looks a bit not quite right. A bit like me. <laughs> Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the features of the uh, connectivity and, you know, the other IOs and all the stuff that goes with it. First, some of these uh, outputs are quite uh, awesome, really. You've got your bridge mode, which is the, the two amps stuck together, which can be up to 500 watts out, which is awesome, really. I said base guys, they'll tell you. And then you've got the stereo, which is can, can be typically 250 or 150 out, depending on the... Uh, the ohms of the speakers. And then you've got the line outs. Well, you could send it in stereo uh, to those two cabs I was talking about. And you can also send the, uh, the line outs, which are really the preamp, to the front of house or the PA. Uh, so you can have two things going on at once, uh, which I think is nice. Now you can do that on a few different products, but uh, most of those other products that I've seen, uh, by default, uh, didn't have a power amp in. Earlier, when we were talking about that pad, you know when you put your guitar in and you want to get them uh, get them pickups set back a bit. You know they might be uh, they might be active pickups and so on and so forth. What you can do is once you set that up, you can actually attach the pad uh, that you've set actually to the preset. Now that's nothing to do with stereo or mono, so don't confuse the things. But you can actually attach the pad to the preset, which is quite nice. Uh, so you can set up a whole pile of presets uh, of your own if you want. Uh, because buckets of them in here, and uh, have the exact pad for the particular guitar that you normally play. Or you can have a different set for a different guitar. Nice. Well, being new with this, it uh, can be a little bit hard on the old brain, <laughs> remembering all the parameters. So I'm just going to read the next bit, because I haven't really plugged this in yet. What it's about is the presets and the memories. Uh, and yeah, I'm holding the book, the little thin, flimsy thing. It's just a couple of lines. It says here, the multi-amp features eight memory banks, each one with 128 presets, subdivided into three factory preset banks and five user banks. So that's five plus three is eight, I guess. Oh, it's just a mind-boggling how much there is in this. Uh, the factory preset banks are these three. They've got, they've got live mono, for mono or bridge connections to a cab. They've got live studio, which is stereo connection into two cabinets, that's what I'm going to be doing, and studio PA for PA system or studio monitor connection. So, like I said, where'd you go? Well, let's talk about slots for a minute. It all sounds complex, but if you remember a little bit earlier in the video, we had this little screen up and we had a preset on there. And that preset 
uh, basically had eight slots. If you notice, there was four across the top, four across the bottom. Makes eight. <laughs> At least he did when I went to school. Now you notice also, go back and check, the eighth slot was the cap. And the thing is, it's always going to be the cap. Uh, it can't be anything else. So slot eight remains the cap. Very easy to choose which speaker up there, or which cap, or what, whatever you will. But the other seven slots uh, can be for almost anything. You can take the amp or the simulation and move it to any one of those slots so you can have effects before or after or effectively in the loop, so to speak. And you can move the positions around accordingly, uh, which is a great way of doing things. And what I like about it is there's eight slots per preset and uh, we've got lots of presets uh, to work at. So. Uh, your chances of running out of memory are pretty remote really and uh, don't forget you've got the SD card where you can back up a pile of stuff and you, you can pull it back in. Nice! Regarding these slots I am going to get the book out again here because there's a whole pile of them and I just want to read them off really uh, so that you've got a good idea about uh, what these slots are really going to be used for and this manual although it is very very thin honestly really thin. Uh, what's great about it, it lists it all out in nice simple English which is, it's not Italian, <laughs> in real English. So we haven't got that translation thing and uh, all that stuff. Anyway, each slot in this thing contains the following options. I thought this was awesome. Non, no effect. Amplifier models. Let me just read them. B drive, blues overdrive. D plus distortion. Metal tone. Obviously, metal distortion, fuzz race, vintage fuzz, CHR 5, stereo chorus, wave flanger, chorus phaser, JC vibrator, says here popular vibrator, I never used it, <laughs> digital phaser, reverb, digital delays, pattern delays, it's called the gate, noise and hum suppressor, I like hum suppressors, mm -hmm. uh, amp tremolo. RSS compressor, natural compressor, it says here, auto war and send and return. So you can set all those things up, uh, even in one of those little places down there, each slot. It's quite awesome because you've got eight slots. Uh, so you can have a load of stuff going on. And don't forget, that send and return can go off uh, to another processor and you could use uh, one of these slots to process a thousand other things. Maybe put the eventide in there. I like the eventide. Awesome sounds. Uh, imagine an even tied with this. Ooh, it's about the same size too. Nice. Put it in the rack, you get the ears with it. What more can I say? Uh, it says here the slot on off button enables or disables the slot on or off. Well, how simple is that? It's there. It's there. Oh. <laughs> but we're going to talk about these channels channel one, two, and three clean, crunch, and rock and roll. <laughs> And it's got a list of things in here which you can have on each one. For channel one, we can have triple six, channel one, nice. Dark face 65 US, well, we don't know what that is. Recto US, channel one. Bass face, or bass face 59 US. Slow drive US and XTC channel one. So we've got a bit of a mix there, but don't forget you can actually load in your own and you can load in uh, presets from the guys. The, the, you know the pros that are, are using this kit and uh, there's a pile of them even Beachio has got one uh, actually this is awesome <laughs> I've heard it we got channel 2 we're moving on to triple six again channel 2 it says top 30 UK sounds bad don't worry probably isn't slow drive US rock 75 and XTC channel 2 well XTC can't be bad can it and at the minute we've got all XTC's as well as all them other things and channel 3 Triple Six Channel 3, Recto US, Rock 900, JCM it would be, Slow Drive, Heavy 51, could be 5150, uh, XTC Channel 3. And uh, if the amp is already selected in one of the slots to have access to its parameters, if featured in that model, go to the slot amp using the buttons and press enter. Rock and roll. Whoa! As you build these amps up, it's going to be awesome. The fact is, you know, if you take the Kemper, I like to talk about the Kemper because I really like the Kemper product. But I like this product too, and they're for different reasons. Uh, 
Yeah, the, the, the Kemper. Uh, great product, and it profiles an amp. This thing doesn't do that, it works in a completely different way. The real competitor is that other one, you know, the expensive American thing. Now, the thing is about this type of product, you know, there isn't a million sounds in this one. It doesn't need to be. I think if you look at the Kemper, uh, I've got one out there, the rack version, I just bought it. I had the other one prior. And, you know, I can have a thousand uh, simulations, let's call them that. They're not quite simulations, the, the profiles, but I can have a thousand to choose from. You know what? I'm never, ever going to be able to use a thousand. Now, what's moving on with the Kemper is this, uh, this mode that allows you to set up a live gig. And that's not implemented yet, but it's not very far away. So that will help that product, in my opinion, quite dramatically. But on this product, you don't need to do all that. You don't need to have this, uh, this sort of mode that uh, takes a while to write. On this one, it's all very simple. Channel 1 is going to give you a selection of cleans. Channel 2 will give you a selection of, uh, you know, crunch. And Channel 3 should give you really great rock sounds. What more do you need? You don't need 10,000 uh, of these simulations like on the American thing. You just don't need it. You don't need a menu that you can't handle or control or don't even want to control. Uh, I know that Andy James uh, chose this product. Uh, and why did he choose it? Well, I have a sneaky feeling it's probably because he likes things to be simple. And what's simpler than a regular tube amp? Nothing. Or what's harder? Well, it ain't this. <laughs> you go figure. Now, looking at the rest of the manual here, the truth is, the rest of it's running through how to create a sound. I don't really want to worry about that right now. I'll do that a bit later. And, I, and I, as I flip through it, it's giving me all the choices of what I could do. And then it moves on to how to store a sound. It tells me a little bit about the send and return and putting that in a slot and so on and so forth. And all the possible multi-amp connections. Use the multi-amp as an effects processor connected to an amp head send and return. Nice. Well, actually, the next thing I'm going to do is get the computer in. And we're going to upload some uh, sounds that I've downloaded from DV Mark, which you can, and uh, go from there. Actually, before I do that, you're really supposed to check the firmware in here. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is checking the firmware, and if the firmware needs updating, I'll update it in front of you. But it's highly likely that this one doesn't. But you never know. Uh, always check for the latest firmware. Always read the instructions and uh, stuff it on your little card and. Or, Maybe not even on your card, you can do it through the computer, maybe. I haven't checked yet, but I'm going to. And uh, when we've done all that, then we'll put these sounds in there. And uh, have a quick look at that. But uh, the real surprise, of course, is that I've got all this video of Andy James playing through this. And I, I do have some video of where he was actually uh, messing around with it. To see what he could get out of the thing. He's a bit better than me, <laughs> actually. I'm 1% of Andy James. I know I'll turn it on. <laughs> so all that's going to be good. I'm back. <laughs> Not quite. Actually, I've got my cup of tea, which we normally have at this time. It's a bit of an English thing, you know. If you're Italian or German or American, you wouldn't know about this. Don't worry about it. Anyway, what we're going to do... So I'm going to show you just how easy this is to, uh, to work and upgrade. I've got my little 16 gig SD card here. I've been onto the dvmark.it website and bought a cab and a something else, I think it's a, uh, an app, uh, to install. But before I do that, I've got to update the OS on this thing from 1.5 to 1.6. Sounds simple enough. Well, it is, and I'm going to show you how we do it. It's all very simple. And by the way, I've never done any of this thing before. It's all just simple, which is really what you want. You don't want to get too involved, do you? Do you? Got my trusty laptop. When you're buying those downloads, by the way, you do need a serial number because they tie the serial number to the thing you download. Clever. I don't blame them either with some of you guys. <laughs> okay, first of all, here's how to format the uh, SD card. You can see there's the SD card, 
whiz down to format all very simple make sure it says fat 32 which is there you can do a quick format or a slow format i'll just do a quick one for now warning yeah there you go it goes away does it format complete close job done now you've got your sd there we open that up it's all rock and roll As you can see on the left we've got the firmware update and on the right we've got the SD card. All you really need to do is to uh, extract all, just say do it, there it is and what you need to do is just pick these two up and pull them across onto the SD card like so and that's basically the thing ready to go. We whiz down here to the SD card right button and say eject now we can take the SD card and fit that back into the uh, multi amp let's go and do that and uh, show you how to upgrade the OS okay one thing I did forget to mention well I didn't actually know I went as I went was uh, uh, I ended up using a uh, there it is a regular SD card as opposed to a SD HD card uh, put in a regular SD card and this one uh, actually is just a one gig one so I'll need to check a bit later what the maximum is that it can support if we go down to there again hit enter press pad fancy that lesson number one uh, don't use uh, SD HD no seriously if you uh, if you just use a regular SD card, you won't have any trouble. And just do what I did earlier, and away you go. So all these uh, high for new SD cards you don't want. Upload OK. Bootloader, press Enter. I'm going to press Enter. Write in the code. This is exactly what happens. I've never done this before either. Boot complete. Sounds good. Switch off the unit, wait five seconds, let's do that. DV mark, multi amp, 1.6, 1.5. There you go. That completes the uh, the firmware. Well, let's now have a look at uh, a couple of things I've bought. Okay, well, what we're going to do now is I've bought these uh, couple of files uh, from uh, dvmark.it. Uh, there they are on the left. I've copied them both to this. Uh, you know the SD card I've got one here and the other one in the other there and first thing you got to do is you got to rename this from what it is to license dot bin now we can do the work on the uh, multi-amp let's go put the SD card in there now Okay, here we are. Go and put the SD into the multi amp. Was down to system. Choose that. Go to load license. There. Enter. SD reading. Done. It's now in there. That's one done. And I'll do the same thing for the other one. By the way, uh, one was a British clean tone amp and the other one was a 12 inch ceramic speaker. That's what uh, we bought and uh, we're installing so choose system load license looks just like it did before done that's it uh, awesome if you go into uh, this one you'll now see at the bottom here that's the one we bought and if we enter that that's it it's set up so good news too because if you go onto the DVMark uh, website DVMark IT. You'll see that there's a load of other presets which are all free. You've got that Beachio file, cool. You got him. You got uh, actually there's a load over oh, England you heard of him. Uh, and there's loads of other guys on there where you can download the presets all completely free. It's only things like the cab and uh, you know that amp. But of course you can make your own. Uh, there's nothing stopping you doing that if you want to just 
mess around a bit, I guess. I'm sure you can do that. Okay. Almost like uh, turning a martial lamp on, and it's all there in front of you, ready to go. You've got your, your, your settings, and how simple is that? Okay, well, I'm going to finish up upgrading up all these sounds into this unit, uh, which looks awesome, and then I'll show you a few things on the menus, and then uh, we can have a, a real expert do the demo. <laughs> Actually, do the playing. He's far more of an expert than I'll ever be. You wait until we see Andy James rock and roll. Okay, let's take a look at uh, user presets. I've got here, you just press the uh, exit button, it will bring up a list. Now this list that you see, basically, what that does is, these are the presets, but they're actually preset to individual channels. You know, channel 1, channel 2, or channel 3, depending on whether they are uh, crunch, lead, or just clean. So for example, if I was to scroll down to, uh, to say, uh, metal power, and choose that, that switched across to channel 3. You can't see, but you just got to believe me, it has. So it whiz back up and put it back where it was to start off with. I'll go on the DV clean. Let's put it back to channel one because both of those are clean sounds. Let's exit that. What I want to do now is to import uh, a preset that uh, Bichio has uh, put on uh, DB Mark, and you can pull that down and uh, install it for free. So hey, here we go. Press system. Press file. I call from SD, put it in user 1, right there, press enter. Now he has a number of presets actually stored in the one uh, master preset, if you will. Anyway, let's have a look. What you see now is these are user presets at the top here, and you can choose them. And as you do that, well, you can't see the amps moving or changing positions, but I can. Uh, there they are. Words on. Excellent. One of the things you do find, if you go and delete those uh, presets later, uh, which you can do, uh, and you just come back into the uh, to the list, you'll find the list's empty. Uh, at least I did. I had to turn the machine off and turn it back on again, and then I got these back. All these, which are the original factory. Once you uh, decide to get into one of these blocks, simple matter to just press enter and now you can go up and down here and change all the various parameters. Another thing I liked, if you hit the uh, speaker button on the front of the multi-amp like this, whoops, like that, you get uh, all the various parameters of the uh, speaker and the mic and the this and the that. Uh, and there's loads of different options in there. Taking a quick look, here's an example of some of the mics. Oh, one thing it won't let you do is to uh, choose a slot and then slither down to amplifier and choose it because there's already one in there. It doesn't let you have two amps. Some people could see that as a good idea and some not. We also have a very simple MIDI section where we can uh, choose the MIDI address or we can, uh, for example, do a bit of a map. That one's set to default. And of course we can choose the amp mode uh, very easily. We can have it either in stereo, mono or br mono bridged. All very simple, you just choose it. I'm back! <laughs> One mean piece of kit actually. Uh, what do I think about it? Well, I think it's in its early days at the moment, but uh, they're not that early a day. I think the firmware on this one was uh, 1.61. Now 1.61's good, it's better than the earlier one. But the point is this, that I think the firmware on this uh, needs to be evolved a little. It works, there's no doubt about that, and uh, you know, I guess you could make the MIDI pedal work and all the rest, and uh, change channels nice and all the rest, and all that stuff. But, 
I still think it needs some more work on actually on the uh, on this uh, IO. And uh, you know, when I looked at uh, other products such as the Kemper, when they first came out, they were quite respectable, uh, indeed as this one is. But you know, as they've enhanced over the year or so that they've been around, maybe uh, 16, 18 months now. Uh, they've got better and better and better and that's what I suspect will happen with this. Uh, it's an awesome piece of kit as you've already seen inside. Uh, the build of it is, is absolutely fantastic and uh, you know some Italian kit isn't like that unless you buy a Ferrari which I ain't gonna do. <laughs> this is a great product uh, if you want to get a, a nice sound fantastic. If you want millions of nice sounds uh, which can be a bit overpowering buy a Kemper. Uh, that, that's a equally a great product. But I think this is going to come along uh, leaps and bounds. And uh, I'd rate this at about, uh, it's about a 9 out of 10. If you'd got that OS updated uh, and a bit more technical information, which I don't currently have, uh, this would be awesome. But watch out on my website for the really in depth review of all the other things that I find out or I don't find out or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's a 9 out of 10, it's a great price, uh, you can buy one reasonably quick if you get in touch with your dealers and things like that. And uh, there you go. Now all I've got left to say is, uh, here's the bit you've been waiting for. I watched Andy James at the Music Messer play through this and he, he was doing all the adjustments and all the rest on it uh, to get his sound. And uh, even though uh, he wasn't in your face so to speak, when he was doing a lot of the getting his own sounds from it. Uh, it sounded awesome and uh, when he did come over uh, I recorded a few minutes of, uh, of his guitar about a foot away uh, showing everything that he did. Uh, awesome sounds, sounded just absolutely fine so here it is without further ado Andy James. I'll just play it. Okay. <laughs>